So in those conversations with civil servants or, or people from the military, obviously they're representing a country deeply pluralist, uh, religiously and philosophically. In such a pluralist context, what kind of role can theology really expect to have at the public table? And how should, how should the theologian, the Christian, the ethicist, how do they engage at that table? Uh, given the the widespread pluralism of our contemporary cultures, I think the word plural is is really important here, um, because there is, uh, as you, as you know, a view that um, in a in a liberal society we should be uh, secularist. That's to say that in in public discussion, uh, religious views sh should be uh, kept well out of it. They should stay at home. And in public discussion, we should we should um, um, talk in terms of uh, secular reason. Uh, I think that is is a wrong view. Uh, I think um, we are indeed a plural society here in Britain and in in Western countries. And what that means is that that everyone uh, should feel free uh, to say things as they see them. Uh, of course. If, if I, as a Christian, I'm going to, going to communicate with a, a non-Christian, I may have to think a bit about how I put that. Uh, uh, if I have to express myself in, entirely in terms of, uh, 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 entirely in biblical terms or with reference to St. Augustine and St. Aquinas, I might find I don't communicate very well because my interlocutor just doesn't know the terms I'm talking about. Um, so, uh, uh, granted the need for uh, a certain prudent um, choice of, of uh, expression, uh, I do think that, that a Christian should say it as he sees it. Um, um, now, uh, depending on what the matter of under discussion is, uh, if, it's a, if it's an ethical matter, uh, I am going to speak primarily in ethical terms, um, terms that I think are integral to my Christian vision of things. I, I may or may not refer to God or the afterlife or Jesus, uh, depending upon where the conversation goes. Um, but I'm not, I'm not embarrassed to do so, uh, and, and if my interlocutor looks a bit amused, well, that's just too bad. Um, no, no doubt, you know, no, no doubt he will also say things that will baffle me. And w what are you hoping for in that kind of a context, though? Because obviously they're not going to accept those, maybe some of those presuppositions that you have, yeah. uh, even if you don't express them. Yeah. So are you hoping to find a kind of secularist middle ground? with them where nobody has to bring in something that would be objectionable to another person? No, not, not quite that. Um, I guess I'm hoping for, for several things. Um, uh, first of all, um, I'm hoping that together uh, we will learn something about the ethical issue on the table. Um, and uh, together uh, we might find that we agree on uh, uh, certain um, um, Elements of we might agree on, on on certain ethical approaches to to the issue on the table. Um, whether we agree on all the reasons supporting our ethical views, um, if you're an atheist and I'm a theist, well, presumably not. Um, um, but to achieve a certain amount of consensus on an important ethical issue is is an important achievement. And the fact that I, as a Christian, have shown myself um, um, uh, careful enough about the issue to want to reach agreement is to my credit, I think. And also, uh, uh, insofar as I have shown my atheist interl interlocutor that I am capable of reasoning, that no, I'm not a, a kind of stereotypical um, irrational fideist, that's also an achievement. And who knows, uh, in the course of um, saying things that my atheist in interlocutor finds persuasive and ethically wise, maybe he might be moved to reassess his assumptions about religious faith. Nigel, I wonder if you can give us an example of when this kind of mutual conversation and attempt to find common ground uh, ha has occurred in your experience, where you've seen this happen. Well, let, let's take the, the issue of uh, the legalization of assisted suicide. Um, uh, and I've been in conversations with with non-Christians on this for some years. Mo most recently, uh, uh, earlier this week in Montreal and Canada, um, and uh, many uh, um, 
uh, non-Christians, many uh, militant secularists, uh, assume that religious people uh, have this irrational attachment to the sanctity of life and that they're moral, morally absolute uh, and that uh, um, that's fine for religious people to hold but sensible, rational people don't hold those views and so really religious people, Christians, have nothing positive to contribute. Uh, in conversation with, with uh, secularists on this issue, um, uh, I've been able to make plain that, that although uh, as a Christian I'm bound to hold the lives of individuals uh, in very high esteem, uh, no, I don't believe in the sanctity of life in the sense of it always being morally wrong to take life, because I, I'm not a pacifist. I think sometimes uh, one may indeed should uh, take um, human lives. So um, I can dispel that simplistic view of a uh, Christian approach to this issue. Um, uh, I can also make quite clear that, that um, uh, both sides on the issue are, are concerned with, with human well-being. Those who want to legalize assisted suicide are, are consumed with concern uh, for the, the unbearable suffering of certain human beings in, in uh, terminal or chronic um, uh, illnesses. Uh, those who oppose legalization uh, are preoccupied with worries about uh, the possibility of um, um, other people being subtly uh, um, um, manipulated into choosing assisted suicide when left to themselves or in, uh, in a more supportive environment, they wouldn't. So I can overcome the, the kind of the notion that those of us who oppose legalization are simply being cruel and hard-hearted. It's not like that. Um, one point where I do find that as a Christian I, I differ from uh, certain secularists is, is on the uh, uh, it, is on the, the, the likelihood of, of our being able to design and execute um, um, safeguards and procedures that will eliminate the possibility of, of subtle abuse. Um, uh, uh, it, before I went to Canada, I read two documents that have been produced there on this issue. Uh, one, a uh, report by the Select Committee of the Assemblée Nationale in Quebec, the other, a recent uh, Supreme Court uh, judgment. And what was really striking was that, that both documents uh, regarded it as, as unthinkable that Canadian professionals or institutions might suffer um, 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 a serious lapse of integrity. Really, they, it was inconceivable. Mm. Um, now, uh, uh, as a Christian, um, I, um, I cannot be so optimistic. I'm not cynical about institutions or professionals, but I cannot be so optimistic. Um, it seems to me that, that a failure of integrity uh, uh, on both parts is quite conceivable. And, and in this country, we've seen several instances of that over the last 10 years. Um, so I, I think a, a certain, um, to me, a certain uh, Christian Augustinian, not pessimism, uh, but, but realism about human fallibility is wise. Uh, and I'd hope to be able to persuade secularist colleagues that uh, that is so. Do you feel like you've been heard? Or that you've had a, that you've been listened to in, in those kind of conversations, that they've heard your concerns and, and taken them on board to one degree or another. Yes, certainly. Insofar as the conversation continues, uh, we we haven't kind of cut out, um, um, and uh, I, I think non Christians, non theists, can recognise um, that point about human fallibility as as a reasonable point, um, although it's not one that the proponents of legal legalization have really taken on board, because if they did, it would complicate their case rather.